Are you wagging tail because you think you're going to go for a walk? Oh, do you think you're going to have two walks in one day? Two walks in one day, little Zebedee? You're going to do two. You got to talk kind of like this to a little, little, little dog. Little baby, baby. Like that. All right, here we go. Two walks in one day, Toby. A big bear. Big boy. He's a big boy now. <clears throat> yeah, it's just we're getting so close, man. We're getting so close. Yes, I do think the rapture could happen in seven days from today on Pentecost or the... Then some people go, oh, well, the Pentecost is actually a couple weeks later. And then they say it's a couple weeks later. And then they say it's good. You know, I'm at, it coincides with 40 days from the solar eclipse, which I can't. At seven years after the first solar eclipse and seven years after the Revelation 12 sign, I, it's, it's significant. I'm sorry, it is. So, yeah, I'm watching. I'm thinking, hey. I'm thinking, hey. Oh, I didn't bring the mail. Okay. Hey, Toby, let's go back. I got to get the mail key. We'll, we'll keep going. I'm thinking, hey, why not? Now, <laughs> scripturally speaking, you can. there are a few predictors, I think, for the rapture. You got the, Jesus will be back in two days. You can predict... There are elements to the return, the second coming of Christ, that are calculable. There are variables in the calculation. That's why it extends itself in chunks of time. But, uh, here, let's go get a different set of keys. Um... I'm, I'm pretty sure that everybody knows by now that a big giant, the big solar eclipse with, um, oh, come on, keys. You know what I'm talking about. What's going on these days? It's like, I know we're close. Oh. Uh, there's the keys. People can just... I'm... Another reason why I'm just recording more is because we're hungry. We need each other. We're, we're... As we get closer and closer and closer, I find that I'm watching... Oh, God. More and more watchmen. More and more regular people like myself just filming and talking. I'm watching more and more of you guys instead of like some... Like church channel or you know i like pre-recorded sermons and the old school stuff um i like old dave hunt you ever heard that guy from the berean call you know what i the more i listen to him i'm like gosh he sees things kind of like how i see how i see it and but what fills me up is regular folks f turning on the camera filming and we're all regular folks who love jesus and most of us are like, we're sinners, man. We need Jesus. That's my favorite type of human. My favorite type of Christian. Like, look, here's why I do it. Because a couple pieces of mail. Oh, not what I was looking for. Bummer. Um, because, because, hi, because. We all need uh, Jesus. But yeah, there are the other types of Christian folk. And you can even sense it when you get around them. You know, it's like... <sighs> Man, it's exhausting. Uh, I, like a super religious Hasidic Jew. Or like a really devout Catholic nun. Or... Someone who's like, like a, some Catholic priest guy or like uh, Mark Wahlberg. 
it's exhausting like dude i'm not gonna keep up man like yeah you can do a million jumping jacks and you can put the black stuff on your forehead and say a million rosary prayers yeah yeah and you you know hey maybe there is some pain and gain here on the earth with those things for i don't think so but maybe there is there's a there's a a gift from the holy spirit with self-control and discipline and um being like organized and having schedules and like long prayer times that are scheduled at 8.05 every day for 45 minutes, turning on, lighting candles. You know, it's not, I'm not saying, hey, that's 100% wrong, man. What I'm saying is, me personally, I always fail at those things. Try to keep a schedule, try to do this, try to work out, try to eat better, try to, I just fail, I fail, I can't, I, I end up failing. And then when I set myself up on those type of exercises, I dive deeper the other way. And that's how I see Jesus Christ. It's like, if you try to gain him, when you look at people who approached him, like the rich man, what do I got to do to enter the kingdom of God? That's how he approaches Jesus. And you look at the Pharisees and teachers of the law, it says, what's the greatest commandment? How does one enter the kingdom of God? When you ask Jesus that way, Jesus responds to you that way. He gives you the answer that way. Sell all your possessions, give it all to the poor and come follow me. The one thing the guy couldn't do. Teacher of the law. What's the greatest commandment? Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your body. And I add even more, I love your neighbor like yourself. Do this and you'll enter the kingdom of God. Unless your righteousness far exceeds that of the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of God. So that, so that's when you get approached Jesus like that, you're going to get the hardcore answer. Now go look at the little guy, Zacchaeus, who climbed up the tree. Now go look at the woman who was bleeding for 12 years and reached out and touched her. Now go look at the leper who needed Jesus. Now go look at the man who was fully possessed by a legion of demons. Now go look at the woman at the well. Now go look at Mary Magdalene. Now go look at all these people. When they approach Jesus, they're baptized. They're born again. They're, even though you know, the Holy Spirit hadn't come down yet on Pentecost, but still, what did they do? Then they went and they told everybody. They went and shared everything they had and told everybody about Jesus. What, what was the response of the law type people? Hmm, 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 let me think about that. That's their response. Let me try a little bit harder next time. You do not inherit the Spirit by work, effort, and law. You inherit the Spirit by the Spirit and by mercy. Love and grace and forgiveness and kindness. So that's what that's what I do, man. That's why we do it every day, all day. Because, man, as we're getting close, we need each other. You can only play so many video games and watch so many ball games and... Oh, look at that mirror. That's a mirror. Watch so many ball games and drink so many beers in life before you're just like, okay, this is all stupid. Okay, it's fun sometimes. Then your belly gets fat and you get full. It's not what goes in a man's mouth that you know, uh, uh, defiles him. It's what comes out. And so I, I eventually you're like, oh, this sucks, man. I just want to be complete and whole in Christ. Oh, you already have it. Yeah. Well, the Bible actually doesn't teach that. The Bible says there's more to come. What we have is a tiny deposit of what is yet to come. And I can sense that inheritance. Why are you wearing your sunglasses inside? I don't know. Cause it looks cool. Talk to you later.